With a news update on 99.7-1450 WHTC, I'm Gary Stevens. A Wednesday night boat cruise ended with a crash into Holland's South Pier. According to Ottawa County Sheriff Sergeant Shane Reich, deputies and other first responders were dispatched to the area around 10.15 p.m. They found that a 26-foot-long vessel collided with the pier about 75 yards east of the functional navigational beacon at the end of the pierhead. A 69-year-old Holland man had been piloting the craft with three female passengers on board, also from Holland, between the ages of 18 and 22 years old. The youngest woman was thrown into the water upon impact, but was rescued by a fellow passenger. She was taken to Holland Hospital for treatment of serious but non-life-threatening injuries. The captain was also reportedly hurt, but Reich didn't disclose the extent of his ailments. Details as to the circumstances that led to the collision were not immediately disclosed, and no names were revealed as the incident remains under investigation. Earlier yesterday, Sheriff Sergeant John Nutt, head of the department's Marine Unit, talked about boating safety after a report by a Florida personal injury lawyer firm showed Michigan was the seventh most dangerous state for recreational boating. Data from the U.S. Coast Guard from last year saw this state had 82 crashes involving vessels in 2023 with 20 fatalities. Not feels that taking a boating safety class could cut down on those numbers. Learn how to be a safe boater. Know, know the laws. Know what to do when you get into trouble. Know your equipment. Wear a life jacket. I would say probably many of those stats would be very low if people would actually use these safety devices on their boat, especially a life jacket. He also says for boaters to stay away from Mr. Booz. I can only imagine how many of those were alcohol-related accidents and fatalities, um, it, especially on the water. It's, it's a, it makes it more unique on the water. Uh, the alcohol's effects um, change you more than they would if you were on, on land because of you're out in the sun, um, you're dehydrated, the boat's rocking back and forth, you know, the weather... Um, it all has effects on how the alcohol is going to change you and how it's going to make you react. The study showed Alaska had the highest ratio of fatal crashes to overall boating accidents at 69%, while Wisconsin had the highest number of overall crashes at 116 and the most fatalities at 24. It was a rough Wednesday in airplane well with a fatal crash around dawn and a near fatal crash near dusk. The first incident occurred shortly after 6 a.m. when a southbound pickup truck on U.S. 131 hit a disabled SUV that was on the right shoulder near the 48-mile marker south of the Allegan Street M89 junction. One of two persons that were outside of the vehicle when it was struck was killed, while the other was taken to an undisclosed local hospital in serious condition. The pickup driver was not hurt, but he was arrested and is in the Allegan County Jail, awaiting arraignment on charges related to the crash. The highway was closed for about four hours as a result. About 14 hours after that crash, a motorcyclist heading eastbound on 3rd Street near 106th Avenue was thrown from his machine after striking a deer that was attempting to cross the roadway. The biker was taken to an undisclosed local hospital in critical condition. No names were immediately disclosed as two separate incidents remain under investigation. A 25-year-old Holland area woman is gradually recovering from the admitted shock of uncovering a grand prize in a Michigan lottery scratch-off game. The unnamed winner claimed $300,000 after showing the emerald green wild-time ticket to lottery officials in Lansing earlier this week. She told them that it was a gift from her uncle, who was with her, when she uncovered the winning number 15. The $5 ticket was purchased at the Lincolnshire Party Store in Delhi off of Lincoln Avenue, which will receive a cash, pr cash prize itself for selling to Ducket. The winner looks to invest her windfall. An annual summer tradition in Holland ends with a bang tonight. The weekly street performer series in which 8th Street downtown is blocked off for a variety of acts from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. ends its run. It's augmented by a block party outside the Herringa Holland Civic Center place, according to Linda Hart of the Holland Area Convention Bureau. They'll have live music, free hamburgers, free hot dogs, uh, the Polar Patrol, ice cream will be there. They'll have food trucks, carnival and yard games. Uh, bloom sculptors, face painters, and the Gentex prize wheel all going on between 6.30 and then 8.30, which is obviously the same time that the street performers are taking place downtown. But an added feature that they're doing this year um, to celebrate Gentex is they are having the fireworks. So um, fireworks are scheduled to kick off around 10 o'clock. They will be set to music 
which okay. is super cool. Yeah. Um, and the show will last about 30 minutes. That fireworks show commemorating the 50th anniversary of the Zealand-based specialty parts maker will be held over Lake Makatawa with Collin Park, the best venue for viewing the explosives. Live music will be in the band shell there beforehand. For the second time in nearly a month, Republican Vice Presidential nominee J.D. Vance was in the Grand Rapids area. The junior senator from the state of Ohio held a campaign rally at a manufacturing complex near Byron Center yesterday afternoon, promising he and Donald Trump will restore American manufacturing if they are elected on November 5th, taking aim at the energy policies of the Biden administration and promising more domestic oil production. Speaking to reporters afterwards, Vance downplayed his youth as a possible disadvantage to the GOP ticket. You know, I, I think that what I can do is, one, obviously I'm bringing a fresh face to the race. A lot of people don't know who I am. I'm only 40 years old, and so I do think I bring a different generation's perspective to the problems of the day. He also wanted to stress what he and Mr. Trump can do. I think the reason that people are disenchanted with politics is that leaders don't talk enough about policy. They don't talk enough about how if you have smarter policy, you can unleash America's spirit and actually get this country moving in the right direction again. Fans appeared with Mr. Trump at Van Andel Arena two days after last month's Republican National Convention and made a campaign appearance at a suburban Detroit police station last week. The Kalamazoo County Sheriff's Office says a three-year-old boy who died after being in an SUV while his father went to a grocery store in Vicksburg on Tuesday afternoon, died because of prolonged heat exhaustion. Western Michigan University Homer Stryker MD School of Medicine's Dr. Chase DeLeon says children should never be left alone inside a vehicle due to how quickly the car can heat up. The interior temperature of the car could easily increase even in temperatures 50 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit. She says children need more time for their bodies to dissipate heat than adults and are more prone to getting heat stroke. Children may start to have symptoms of headache, dizziness, fatigue, eventually ensuing to difficulty of breathing or lethargy, and this could eventually lead to death. The matter remains under investigation. No charges have yet been filed. Rabid bats have been confirmed in six West Michigan counties over the past eight weeks. First confirmed by the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services in Kent, Allegan, and Calhoun counties, and have since been found in Berrien, Kalamazoo, and Ottawa counties. There have been 23 rabies-positive bats found in the state this year. Governor Whitmer says her office might seek to get clarification from the state Supreme Court on a minimum wage ruling issued on July 31st. The State Department of Treasury hasn't released information on what the new minimum wage and tip wage will be in February. Early estimates are those will go up by $2 an hour. Whitmer said after a bill signing ceremony in Van Buren Township yesterday that there are still questions and everyone's still looking into the decision. Restaurants and other businesses are urging lawmakers to push for a legislative change when they return to Lansing next month. State Attorney General Dana Nessel is launching a partnership with the U.S. Marshals Service and county prosecutors called Operation Survivor Justice. She wants to bring people who are accused of sex offenses in Michigan back to the state for trial if they have fled. Nessel said it would make a significant difference and touch the lives of victims. The legislature gave her office a million dollars to track and extradite fugitives. As parents get their youngsters ready for a new school year, beginning next week for many, help could be on the way for this time next August. When lawmakers return to Lansing after Labor Day, House Bill 5805 will be considered by the lower chamber's Committee on Tax Policy. The measure, sponsored by suburban Detroit Republican Mark Tisdell, would set aside the third Saturday and Sunday in August for lifting the state's sales tax on clothing, school supplies, and other needed equipment for students. First-term legislator Nancy DeBoer of Holland would be a yes vote if the measure does emerge on the House floor. Back to school is kind of a universal situation with all the kids in the state, and it's a hard, hard days we're going through with people having to try to make um, less money go further, and everything costs so much more. It can be pretty overwhelming for families uh, as they're trying to pay for food that costs so much more and gas and uh, and then of course clothes and kids like to have a little something new and they want you want them to get excited about going back to school and I remember always thinking that was so fun to go get your school supplies and organize everything and be ready for the first day of school and so if we can encourage families 
that if they go on this particular weekend, uh, they can skip their tax. It's just the way for the state to say, hey, we see you. We realize what you're going through. We can't do everything, but we can at least do this and uh, want to help you, support you as you encourage your kids to get back and learn and um, develop the gifts and talents that they had so they have this so they can help the world with whatever the problems are that they will be experiencing. So I think it is a universal kind of thing that it helps all the kids and it's a way to encourage families and a positive attitude to going back to school. The Institute on Taxation and Economic Policy figures that states that have participated in such a sales tax holiday weekend, and there are 19 such states thus far, lost revenue on average between $3.1 million and $5.1 million. Akil Badu's RBI double in the 10th inning enabled the Tigers to edge the visiting Seattle Mariners last night 3-2. The 1-2. Swinging a fly ball to center. That one's deep. Robles on the run. Still going. Still going. Over his head. Tigers win. Meadows around third. Akil Badu delivers. The series at Comerica Park in Detroit concludes this afternoon with coverage led by Dan Dickerson at 12.45 p.m. on 99.7-1450 WHTC. Andres Jimenez drove in three runs as the Cleveland Guardians topped the visiting Cubs last night 6-1. Chicago hosts the Toronto Blue Jays at Wrigley Field tomorrow afternoon. Aaron Judge and Austin Wells each homered and had three RBI. As the visiting New York Yankees wiped out the White Sox at guaranteed rate field last night 10-2. Chicago takes on the Astros in Houston tomorrow evening. Theron Lirianzo's three-round homer ignited an eight-run West Michigan first inning as the Whitecaps romped past the Lugnuts in Lansing yesterday 11-2. The series at Jackson Field continues this evening. Get the latest news anytime at whtc.com.